Hey everybody and welcome to the Katie Weaver Show. This is Katie, I'm your host, and I'm so happy to be here. If you are listening live, it is the 3rd of April. <laughs> no April Fool's Day here. It is the 3rd already, the 3rd of April at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. And of course, we are live. I also want to let you know that we're over in the chat room. You can find it by heading over to 12radio.com. That's number one, number two radio.com. And click on the chat button and Christy will gladly let you into the chat room. So you'll see my banner at the top of the page. That's where we are chatting. But you can also uh, watch the live stream right here in the chat room if you would prefer. So that's the place to find it. Um, you can just scroll down and see it. And I will uh, later on today or tomorrow upload the live stream over onto my YouTube channel and that's Domestic Mystic on YouTube. So you can find it over there if you'd rather watch it later on. Either way, I'm glad to be here. I hope you guys are glad to be here. It is a rainy, dreary day around here, but we'll take it because you know in the spring that just greens everything up and we need it. So what can I say? <laughs> I hope you guys are having a really great week. I have a huge announcement today, but I'm kind of holding off for a few minutes to make sure we have everybody in the room because <clears throat> I know how y'all like to show up late and I'll tell you how I know that because that's what I do. <laughs> no, I get here on time. I'm late for everything, but not my radio show. Pretty great. I was late for my wedding. I, that's terrible to admit, but it's true. <laughs> At any rate, all is well. I had an opportunity over the weekend to go to Boise to watch my daughter play softball and get to see my kid. And it was just really, really nice to get to go. And we actually had a babysitter. We had a house sitter, a nephew, who stayed at our house to take care of the piggies and some of our dogs. We took our little boys with us. But so that was kind of fun and interesting. I've never done that before, but it worked out really well. And the pigs were, I think they were happy to see us, but they clearly loved him because he was uh, sending us Snapchats of them laying on top of him on the couch. So I think that it worked out just fine. So I'm glad to, really glad to have that in place because that's one thing with the pigs, they're tough to leave. It's hard to go out of town and, you know, they have to have a lot of attention. And so it's nice to know that we have somebody that we've trained now and that can stay with them and take care of them. And so all's well. So that's kind of cool. All right, well, here's my big announcement. I surprised the heck out of myself yesterday and did something that I hadn't even thought about doing. It was actually Scott's suggestion and I felt like it was the right one and I still think it is, but um, I have been on Wednesdays in this time slot for just about five years now. I've been a Wednesday girl forever. Well, I'm moving. So the Katie Weaver show starting next week will be on Tuesdays at noon Pacific. So I'm just moving one day over. So I will be Kelly Whetstone's neighbor now. And so I've gone from being Christine's neighbor. Now I will be Kelly's. So noon Pacific on Tuesdays, same show, same live stream. Everything remains the same except for that I'm moving to a new day. So I'm excited. I'm a little scared. This morning I was like, what the hell were you thinking? Why did you do that? Why would you do that? But I think it's right. It's time for a change, a little change. So I hope that you will all come with me. I hope that you'll come with me on the journey and come uh, join me on Tuesdays now. Now there is someone coming into my time slot that you all know and love well. And I hope she doesn't mind if I announce. I think it's okay. <laughs> Christy is moving the Christy Brower hour to the 11 o'clock spot. So there is still going to be a great show in this time slot. And so she was at 7 a.m. Pacific kind of early. So now she's excited to get to move into this spot. It's perfect. So I know you guys will be here to support and love on her, but I hope you come see me on Tuesdays too. So again, that's at noon Pacific on Tuesdays uh, right here on One Two Radio. So, ooh, yay, what? <laughs> Here's the thing, I'm a cancer. We don't change shit, we don't change. We don't like change. So the fact that I decided to do that makes no sense at all, but I think it's good. It will be fine. It'll be fine, right? You guys are gonna come with me. So what's my problem? 
There is no problem. This is a good thing. <laughs> Such a weirdo about changing stuff. Anyway, so this is good. It's going to be fun. Yeah, Tuesday. I've never done Tuesdays. You know, the Psychic Sisters has been on Thursdays for seven years. Always been on Thursdays. And on Thursdays at uh, noon or at 11 a.m. Pacific for five years as well. So we don't do different things. And that one is staying put. Don't. That one's staying put. Everything is fine. <laughs> oh, good. Christy put her new banner up. Yep. There it is. Yay. <clears throat> so this is happening. So I'm really excited because I told her yesterday I'm thinking about moving into that uh, time slot that's available on Tuesdays. And she was like, well, let me tell you that if you do that, I'm going to move to and take your spot on Wednesdays. And I was like, okay, then it needs to happen. It's perfect. This is what's supposed to be going on. So here we go. <laughs> all righty. Well, anyway, it's all good. So I hope all is well in you guys' worlds. I know that it's an interesting week. It's a great week, I think. I think that um, the energy is a little bit more flowy this week. I feel like we're feeling a little bit more enthusiastic which is great. I think that we're feeling a little uh, more energetic, which is great. So that's what I'm rolling with this week is that we're in a good energy for movement. And we haven't been always, right? I mean, really haven't been. The last few months have been really weird as far as movement and flow has gone. I think that a lot of you guys that have kind of been sitting in a holding period and not quite sure where your next uh you know, movement was coming from, I think you're finding it right now. So, and it's easy. It's not hard stuff. There's just an easy flow right now. And I love and appreciate that. I think we deserve that from time to time. My God, I think we've all struggled enough. <laughs> right? So it's good. This is a, this is a good week. I, I'm, I'm encouraged. So I hope that you guys are as well. Now, today is our animal communication show. This is my favorite show. Seriously, my favorite show. Maybe not. Maybe. I love the animal communication show. So here we are. And I'm really hoping that uh, you guys will share your babies with me. So we're going to talk a little bit today about epigenetics in animals. And I'll get to that a little bit later down the line. But I would love to see your animals. If you have any of your fur babies or it doesn't have to be that. If you have a raccoon that won't stay out of your trash or skunks living under your porch or if you have an animal thing that you need me to work on, today's the day. So make sure that you throw your questions up in the chat room. We're going to get to that later on in the show. And again, I love this show because I love that you guys all start putting pictures of all of your kids up in there for us to see. And well... I love that. So, <laughs> all righty. Terry said that uh, Wednesdays are hard, so Tuesdays will be better for her. Terry, yay. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, good. Lynn says she's coming too. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Tuesdays are great. Tuesdays are great. Yes, they are. So, so are Wednesdays around here, but every day's a good day in Went to Radio Land, right? <laughs> all righty. Well, let's do some of our regular stuff. Is anything regular around here? We try, right? <laughs> and then we'll, uh, we'll get into all of our animal stuff. So I would love to draw your attention over to the magazine. I'm going to put a link up in the chat room, but you can also find it just by heading over to katie-weaver.com and clicking the Katie's Magazine link right there, and you'll find... The magazine for this week, brand new cover for April. I love it. When I found that um, that photo, I had to have it because the that bluebird just really sang to me. So pretty and it's very springy. Spring has sprung-ish, right? <laughs> so I loved it. Okay, well, I did call the magazine this week, the Easy Does It edition, because this week really promises good flow and it's happening. It just feels good. Ease of decisions, ease of actions, really just following the breadcrumbs, not swimming upstream, not trying too hard, just letting this week flow and 
kind of let some of the things you've already been manifesting start to really show up. So that's all powerful. Speaking of that, Matea, my, my senior, she left this morning to go to the state uh, competition for FCCLA. So we talked about this earlier back in January, February, February. She competed in the district uh, FCCLA competition, which is, uh, for her, she has a presentation that she put together on occupation exploration, which was really important because it led her exactly to where she wants to be as far as occupation and what she's going to start college in in the fall. But anyway, <laughs> she, uh, so she left today to go to Boise to compete in the state competition. So I'm so excited because she really, uh, she scored extremely high in the district one. So I can't wait, but typical, I mean, this is my kid. This is my Pisces who has all the answers and basically runs everybody else's life. And <laughs> she told me today, this morning, I said, now, before you compete, you have to go through your presentation a few times. You need to do it, you know, perform it for your advisor and for your roommates and really, you know, go through it several times, make sure you're ready. And she was like, I know. <laughs> Why do I tell this kid anything, right? She's like, I know what I need to do. I've got it down. You don't have to worry. And I went, yeah, she's right. It's that mom in me, you know, but you don't tell her. <laughs> You really don't. Oh, that's too funny. Uh, Kate, so Kate's local. She wants to know where she could find me to set up a reading. You can just, um, you can get a reading with me through Healing Hands. So I still see, you know, I don't own Healing Hands anymore, but I still see clients there occasionally. So just make contact with me on Facebook and we can work that out. I do see still, still see some locals, but of course you can always find me on the phone lines too over at 12 Listen. So either way is great. All righty. Anyway, easy does it. So easy does it for Matea. So lots of good vibes for her that she'll have a great week. If she places uh, in the state, then she gets to go on to the national competition in California in a couple of months. And that, uh, if you place nationally, that gives you a nice scholarship. So, you know, we're all about scholarships in this family. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are too. You know, if you have a college kid, you know what I'm talking about. So we'll see. If it's the right thing, it's the right thing, right? Okay. Well, Christy brought us the crystal guidance this week. It is pink kunzite. Pink kunzite supports loving thoughts and supports positive thinking and communication. What could be more perfect for a week where we are in the flow, right? All right. She brings us from her Energy Oracle deck, the Ariel card. And this, of course, is from, you know that her deck, you've probably already heard us say this, but her deck is, uh, it's, it's released for sale now. So this is, um, it is a new and improved package from her deck that she released last year. This one is a little different. It's got all of the meanings of the cards right on them, and she added a whole bunch of new cards. So. Hopefully she'll put a link up in the chat room for us, but definitely pick up her new deck. The artwork is beautiful and the cards are fantastic. I'm so excited. She still has my deck. She's holding it for ransom because I haven't paid her for it. <laughs> I guess I should do that and get my deck in my hot little hands. All right. But this week she brings us Archangel Ariel. Ariel's primary message is magic, nature, manifesting, synchronicity, looking for a miracle, connection to elementals and third eye. The challenge is deception, wishful thinking, and dissatisfaction. The crystal is purple fluorite. The meditation is dear Archangel Ariel, please surround me in magic, drawing possibilities to me, bringing fairies to guide me, and attracting miracles. I think we could all use a little more of that, right? Dear Archangel Ariel, please surround me in magic, drawing possibilities to me, bringing fairies to guide me, and attracting miracles. I love it. That's perfect. And then Kai's Kaleidoscope. Kai, of course, has a show here on Wednesday. She's an advisor over at Want to Listen, and she brings us our animal guidance for the month, and it happens to be the elk 
which Kai, I really, really resonated with this article. I love that you chose the elk. Elk are so magical and majestic. She said that when not in mating season, the elk is known as the ghost of the forest. Uh, people farm elk around here, which is kind of weird, but um, you can drive around in the country around where I live and see these massive elk farms. And it's so interesting to get to see them up close, but Scott can bugle. And so he'll, you know, stop on the side of the road you know, during mating season and bugle and they all bugle back and it's the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life. So just, just so you know, <laughs> that's cool. Elk are amazing. Yeah. Very cool. So I loved what she had to say about elk and just all that elk magic. So thank you, Kai, for that. I love it. Alrighty, the tip of the week is the door tip. I told you guys last week I was going to paint my door green. I haven't done it yet. I really want to. It's just, you know, life. What the hell? Life just keeps happening. But I am going to paint my front door green because of our tip last week. But here's a different tip. Here's a different thought for you. Go blue. Paint your front door blue to bring a refreshing energy of calm, ease, purity, and freshness to your home. So, if what you're working on is bringing ease, if you need things to get easier, to flow better, to just move with you, if you need a little more calm in your home, blue, paint your door blue. Love it. All right, Dr. Elisa says, you have the courage and grace to move forward in the face of adversity. You know, sometimes we all need that reminder you are stronger than you think you are. You do have the courage to take the steps forward that you need to take. I loved her article. I, I appreciated the reminder. I think we all need it sometimes. I was thinking about that uh, scene in that Cher movie. I, I want to say it's Moon, oh, it's Moonstruck, where she slaps her son in the face and screams, snap out of it. And, you know, I think we all need that slap in the face every once in a while. Maybe not physically, but, you know, every once in a while we need somebody to say, knock it off. Yes, you can. Enough with your drama. Enough with your whining. You're stronger than you think you are. Knock it off. I know I need it sometimes. Sometimes I have to give it to myself. <laughs> but we all need that every once in a while. And that's what that article was for me. So thank you, Dr. Elisa. I loved it. Our weekly cosmic strip from Elizabeth Lindsay. I love it. This is this week. It's The Guardian. And here she is with, of course, Octavia at her neck with an angel standing behind her. Big reminder to everybody that you are not alone. And you know, sometimes we feel alone. Sometimes life just seems pretty damn alone. But if you take some time, if you get yourself into nature, if you breathe, if you shut down the chatter, you find it. You remember that connection comes back. You are never alone. Our Magic Monday message from Melissa Caprio uh, is her postcard this week that says, in this moment, I am grateful. I loved it. It's really cool. And just, you know what? That's also a really big reminder, a really big reminder, because you know what? Sometimes gratitude is the only thing that snaps you out of your funk. Sometimes gratitude is the very thing that pushes your own manifestations up to the next level. Really sitting in a place of gratitude is really important. And I think we all need that reminder every once in a while. I know I do. All right, Chris Ann Morgan, of course, brings us this intuitive life. And she was talking this week about the fool. <laughs> the unlimited potential of the human spirit and the complete faith that life is good. Loved it. And of course, she uh, sent this to me on April Fool's Day and was thinking about the Fool card in the tarot deck. And that's where she went with it. So I love what she had to say. Really good advice. I really like her writing style. And then we have a brand new contributor. This is Taya. Taya is an advisor over at One Two Listen. And she's a specialist in sound healing. And so she wrote this beautiful article about sounding for pain relief and self-healing and also provided us with a video 
for some um, additional instruction and assistance. Assistance, there's the word. <laughs> really cool. I am so excited to welcome her to Luminous. So if you see something uh, in Luminous, as always, that you love, make sure that you let somebody know. But definitely take a look at her article, uh, watch her video. If you need a little help with pain relief and self-healing, it's right here. Really, really powerful stuff. So thank you, Taya, very much. And we're happy to have you. And then lastly, Anita and the Masters. Anita brings us this week Archangel Uriel. Uriel is known as the light of God and the face of God. Really interesting. We've all worked with Uriel probably from time to time, but I would love to uh, invite you to connect with Archangel Uriel this week and read what Anita has to say. It's helpful. And then, of course, a little uh, note, uh, a, a reminder that Grace's new documentary is out called Psychic, A Gift of Grace. I'm sure that many of you have already watched it, but it's available on Amazon Prime now and on Gaia. I believe it's available on Roku and Vimeo. So lots of ways to find it and watch it. So make sure that you do if that calls to your heart. So that's Luminous this week. So many great articles, so much good stuff happening. So... I'm glad to share it with you guys. If you'd like to subscribe to receive Luminous, you can subscribe on the homepage of my website at katie-weaver.com. And if you just scroll down right below my video, you can click on the picture there to subscribe to the Domestic Mystics Daily Dish. And what that is is a daily reading that comes out every morning that gives you a little extra boost for your day. But if you subscribe for that, then I'll send you the daily reading, but I will also send you um, Luminous once a week when it is published. Of course, I also post it, you know, it goes on my website and it goes on my Facebook page. So there's lots of places to find it, but that's, uh, that's the way to get it when it's hot off the press is to just subscribe right there. So I'll put a link in the chat room too, but that's where you find it. It's right there at katie-weaver.com. Hey, I'm seeing all kinds of babies showing up in my chat room. I love it. Okay. <laughs> all righty. Well, let's do our reading for the week. So I've already pulled the cards. So Kate says she already had blue paint on her errand list. See, now you know why. <laughs> we need more color around here, man. Idaho needs some help. We are still very ugly. That's what happens in the early spring. You guys know this, when the snow melts, oh, everything's pretty ugly. So I'm liking the rain because it's really greening things up. I didn't like it when I sat through a double header of softball yesterday in the rain, five hours of sitting in the rain. But what we won't do for our kids, right? It works. All right. I pulled cards from the Ground Bless Protect and Move deck. This is of course my deck. Then you can learn more about it over on my website if you're interested. But it's a five card reading. So we're going to talk about a lot of different areas of self care for the week. So the first card is, nope, I've got it. Oh, I'm all out of order. <laughs> I'm just gonna start showing you random stuff. The first card is the ground card and the ground card I pulled this week is the draw card. So this is just a reminder that you can ground yourself by using your hands to do something. You could do that through drawing, through doodling, through coloring, through painting, through sewing. Using your hands and focusing on something is a great way to ground yourself. So get busy. Were you one of those kids that had to be doodling during classes and stuff? Were you one of those kids that always had to be creating something with your hands? Years ago, I was at a training for a mentoring training for the state of Idaho and they had the table set up in a horseshoe and then of course the presenter you know at the front but I noticed that every so often on the table there was a pile of these little benderoos have you ever seen those they're kind of like a piece of yarn with uh, sticky stuff that like dipped in the sticky stuff and you can stick them together and create you know whatever so there was never any instruction about the benderoos. There was never any um, activity with them, but I noticed that some people around me were playing with theirs and creating things while they were listening. And I started doing that too, because for me, 
doing something to keep grounded and keep centered is good for me in, as far as listening and being a kinesthetic learner. I need to be in motion as I learn. So I was building things and, you know, I, the, the few of us that were doing that were kind of reaching out and borrowing from neighbors who weren't playing with theirs. And, you know, pretty soon we're building ca log cabins and castles and, you know, animals and various things. And it was interesting to look around the room and see the people that were building playing with them. And of course, uh, this was a conference for early childhood care providers. And so, you know, the people who put that conference on understand that some people need to be in motion in order to learn. But I think from an energetic place that also applies to needed, needing to be in motion in order to stay grounded. And that's a huge part of that component. So I always thought that was interesting and pretty brilliant of them. And I have always thought if I were to put on a conference, I would definitely provide some kind of quiet movement activity for those in the house that need it. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are. You might need that. I need that. <laughs> okay so ground yourself by using your hands this week all right the blessed card this week is water bless water well that makes sense right the world is made up of, made up of water our bodies is made up of water the atmosphere lots of water <laughs> and so how do you ground or how do you bless water well the picture on the card is a hand hands wrapping around a glass of water filling it up with light and I think that's brilliant. I think you can bless water as well by sitting by a body of water and beaming your hands, your energy to fill that up with light. And you hold the intention. What do you want to do with this water? Do you want to purify it? Do you want to clear away any energetic residue that you don't want to introduce into your body or that you don't want to continue to flow on the planet? Do you want to remove trauma or pollutants or any other lower vibrating energy? Do you want to fill it up with light and hope and love? You decide, right? There's no wrong answer. So take some time this week and bless water. All right, the protect card this week is bulletproof glass. So bulletproof glass is a really great way to protect yourself. You know, it's easy to just not go places that don't feel good to you. And some of my empaths do that very thing. But it's also not always possible, right? I mean, you do probably have to go to work. Maybe you have to go to your mother-in-law's house. You probably have to buy some groceries every once in a while, right? <laughs> and so for that reason, the Bulletproof Glass card is really helpful. So consider building a plate or a pane of Bulletproof Glass between you and that coworker that always drags you down or whatever that situation is that's just not uh, letting you retain your own frequency. That's probably the biggest one for me is when you're around people that tend to kind of just grab you by the ankle and drag you down. The bulletproof glass activity or exercise is a great way to just kind of create a barrier, create some space so that you can maintain your vibration. All right, the move card this week is the yoga card. Are you all going to do yoga? Probably not, but some of you will. Um, don't be hurting yourself, right? Just But if you're a yoga doer, then yes. Maybe it's just some easy stretching for you. Maybe you're just going to walk around the block. That's fine. But a little movement this week. Moving your physical body helps to release any energy that's gotten stuck or trapped in there that maybe you don't want anymore and it stimulates those happy hormones in your brain. So a little bit of movement is key for spiritual self-care. All right, and then the boost card is the get social card, which basically means get social. Don't be a hermit this week. Have coffee with a friend or at least make some contact. Talk to somebody on the phone, go out to dinner. If you were invited to go to something, then by God, go. <laughs> I know. Sometimes we're tempted to just um, kind of stay home, stay in our little hidey hole. I get that, but don't do that to yourself too much this week. Make sure you do get some social time. Even if for a minute it feels like it's uh, too much for you, consider working, working through it and going anyway. It would be good for you. Okay. <laughs> 
So that is the ground bless, protect, and move reading for the week. All righty, I'm looking in the chat room here. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna get to some readings here, some animal communication. I do want to talk about epigenetics in animals. I think that this is such a fascinating, fascinating topic. So on the uh, scientific scale, right? There is a study of epigenetics that is looking at your DNA. We've talked about this lots of times. Looking at your DNA and looking at scars you could carry on your DNA from your ancestors. It's something that can be passed down to you. There's been some really fascinating studies with children uh, that were born uh, around the, or, or whose mothers were pregnant during Chernobyl and other world events. Uh, so many studies actually around people who whose ancestors had trauma and their current playing out of that trauma whether it's uh through some kind of <clears throat> anxiety or ptsd or health issue but it's something that that's happening we've been doing work on it for quite a while well it applies to animals as well so years ago I had this a sweet client who lives in an apartment, had one dog, but kind of felt like that dog needed somebody and decided to adopt a puppy that uh, came from a bunch of feral dogs that were living in a, in a nearby town on an Indian reservation where there's a lot of feral dogs. And this rescue group had been going in there and gathering up the puppies and the pregnant mamas and you know getting them fixed and getting them adopted out and yada yada right so this little guy had come from some of these dogs adorable adorable little guy and sweet and wanted to please and was was a doll until food came out any kind of food whether my client was cooking Sometimes what was not food, but perceived as food, like maybe picking up something off the floor that he thought was food. And then he turned into a ferocious beast. Now, understand, he was not born there. His mama was. He was born in a shelter. And where he was fed and cared for and adopted out. But his mother grew up there with feral dogs and my client was baffled because she, of course, had never withheld food from him, nor had, you know, the shelter he came from. And this little guy was well taken care of, of course. But any time food was an issue, any time she fed him or her other dog, I mean, it was ugly. He had attacked her a few times and drawn blood. He attacked the other dog. But as soon as food was out of the picture, he was back to his same little loving self. So... She wanted some help with that, obviously, because uh, <laughs> that's kind of a big problem. So I came in and, and, and worked with him. And it was such a fascinating thing because what my guidance showed me was that because I thought, okay, well, he's, you know, sure, right? I mean, his ancestors struggled for food, so he struggled, you know, he thinks he struggles for food. I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? You know, I mean, that's just... That's one of those inherent uh, needs, right? That's just an inborn behavior from his ancestry. Well, yeah, duh. But how do we help him? How do we fix it? Because we're already proving to him that he has what he needs. We're already showing him. We've never withheld food from him. He has everything he needs. So how do we convince him that behaving like this isn't necessary? But what his guidance showed me was that he has scars on his DNA from ancestors who had to fight like that to get food, who did starve, you know, who did have rare opportunities to get food and had to fight ferociously for it. And that that's how we alter that behavior. Because what they were showing me is that we can assure him all we want that he's always going to have food and that he doesn't need to fight for it. But when food comes out, that explanation goes out the window and his DNA kicks in. And so we had to go further. So 
on that uh, understanding, I sat with him and did the same kind of DNA healing I would do for anybody else to heal those scars around lack, around food, around starving, around fighting for food. We found those scars and we healed them. And then I replaced that idea in him with a new affirmation that my needs are always met. I am well, I am comfortable, I am fed. And then we waited to see what would happen. And the next day, the client texted me and said, guess what? Nothing, nothing is happening. I'm feeding them. He's not fighting. He's not attacking. He stole a pencil. I picked it up. He didn't, or took it out of his mouth. He didn't bite me. Nothing. <coughs> His behavior turned over overnight. It was so amazing. Now, for two or three weeks, he was great about food. There were no issues. And then, out of the blue, some of that stuff started again. So we went back and we did the work again. And what I discovered is that there was, I don't know if we can call it a new scar, but there was another scar. There was another marker that was adding to his behavior. So we cleared it and guess what? He went back to his sweet little old self. It was really profound. And I mean, it's obvious in, in the series of, of evolution and of survival that obviously animals will behave as their ancestors did in some, to some degree in order to survive, right? Sure. But occasionally those behaviors are unbecoming, <laughs> make it hard for them to, uh, to, to be rescued, to live in society. She was going to return this puppy to the shelter if it didn't get better. She's disabled. She, you know, could not handle a dog that was that ferocious, but it never happened again. He really turned things around and that was the last we had to deal with that. To me, that's incredible. That is to me something that, uh, you know, that you, that's a huge breakthrough for all of us in working with behaviors of animals and working with the behaviors <clears throat> of animals that uh, sometimes are really tough to understand. You know, sometimes we can look at them and go, all right, I get it. I know why you're doing this and we're going to work on it. But sometimes you try everything and we're still confused and we're still not sure why we can't help this animal to, you know, work on this thing so that they can be more successful. So, Anyway, that's it's always been an interesting story to me, an interesting breakthrough, and I've used epigenetics in animals many times since, and I think that it's really helpful. So I wanted to share that with you guys so that if you run into something perplexing, something that other uh, behavior modification and, and animal communication and conversation hasn't been able to resolve, that's sometimes our next step is to look at the epigenetics and decide, is there something here that needs to be adjusted that needs to be affected so there you go <laughs> okay just jumping in the chat room Jane sends us Max she says she has a standing noon appointment on Tuesdays Jane darn it <laughs> I know you'll catch the replay if you can't though and I will miss you but of course you get to see Christy on Wednesdays and of course I'll always see you on Psychic Sisters right right <laughs> Good to see Max doing so good. All right, Lynn says she was bitten by a spider two weeks ago and her leg is still so sore. Wondering if we have any thoughts about it. It was venomous and caused a dark dead spot in the middle of the bite. Yikes, Lynn, boo. Okay, she says she has been to the doctor. She's hoping, hoping it's gonna calm down and start to heal. Lynn, yes, it's gonna calm down and start to heal. I am not so sure that you aren't going to have to go back to the doctor though. I feel like the uh, the treatment that you've had so far is has not done enough for you and I think if this was my spider bite in my leg I'd go back or even get a second opinion because I think you're going to need a little more help than what you've had so far to uh, kick this in the butt. Is it going to get better? Yes it's going to get better. But I think, it, I, I suspect you're gonna need a little bit more help than you've had to <clears throat> get past it and get feeling better. So I'm sorry about that, that sucks. Okay, Renee says, 
I'm not sure, but I think it's a picture of her kitty, by the way. She said, I'm not sure, but I think Teddy was the one that gave Fancy the injury under her chin. Picture of Teddy outside and picture of Fancy inside. Oh my goodness. Tabby's so pretty. I absolutely love it. Okay. Yeah. He did, Renee. He's bullying her a little bit. He is. He's bullying her. It's a statusy kind of thing, but I'm going to work with him for a minute and let him know that we're not going to have that. So let me tune into Teddy. Yeah. That was kind of a keeping her in her place kind of thing. So I'm just showing him. There's kind of a weird energy between them, isn't there? Sometimes I think it's good, but other times he's kind of, yeah, he's kind of a bully. So I'm just letting him know that we absolutely aren't going to have that. He has such a strong energy. Like he feels like a wild cat to me in how uh, like strong and dominating his energy can be. But I did show him, you know, her injury and, and tell him that we know that he did that and that we're not gonna have that. And he, he agrees that he did do that, but he's showing me that it's because he needed her to know who's in charge. And so what I let him know, Renee, is that you are in charge. He's not in charge, neither is Fancy and that he will defer to you and not try to force Fancy to defer to him. Oh, kitties. Sometimes they're, um, oh, their food chain is tough to take. I think that will get better though. Sometimes, you know, we just have to establish you as, you know, the top cat so that they get it. Okay. Jessica says, can you help with Sammy? The poor guy has fleas and will not let me put a flea treatment on him. He's so uncomfortable scratching and itching, but he won't let me put it on him. Thanks for your help. She said he squirms and scratches and bites to get away. In the distant past, when I did get it on him, he tried to lick it off the back of his neck. He hates the flea treatment more than he hates the fleas. Yeah, he does. The way it smells really, really bothers him. But I'm going to show him that he has to do it and see if we can get him a little bit to, a little bit more friendly to it. I don't know very much about flea treatments for cats, but I'm asking you because I'm being prompted to if it is possible to get a different brand, something that has less of a smell, I don't even know that it has so much of a smell to you, but something about the odor of it just really, like it tastes bitter in his mouth. So that's what he's showing me. And so he's fighting tooth and nail because he really, really hates it. Um, is it possible to try another brand? And maybe you've already done that, but <coughs> let's think about something that's extremely gentle. All right, but I'm going to show him all the scratching. And then the treatment and help him understand why it needs to happen. And I'm just asking him to please cooperate and telling him that you're going to look into finding something that isn't quite so uh, heavy for him but I am explaining to him that he absolutely has to allow a treatment. And I'm showing him stretched out sleeping comfortably with no itches because the fleas are gone. He's agreeing. I got to tell you, Jessica, he's agreeing that he would like to not have all the itches. Yeah, 
he's really good on that. But he definitely needs uh, needs something. Ah, poor guy. Let's see if there's something that can be found that will help him. Okay. Kate says, can you talk to Steven about not bullying Basil, our new kitty? More bullies in the house. Okay. <laughs> Damn it, cats. <laughs> Let's take a look. Kate, I'm going to connect to Steve through you. Oh, I love him. He's all personality. Okay, he's mad about Basil because he didn't want him. So let's be clear on that. He was very happy not sharing his family. So he's he's a little jealous. He's not so worried about the hierarchy. He's not that worried about Basil like taking his place on the hierarchy. He's just liking messing with him. He's just being a bitch. So, <laughs> all right, Stephen, we're going to talk about it. I really believe that these two are going to grow into great friends and they'll actually have quite a bit of fun together. These will be cats that are like tearing through the house 4,000 miles an hour and you'll be like, what is wrong with these two cats? <laughs> you know, but they do. They're going to develop into, but their friendship will always be different than, I mean, these are male cats, right? So, or well, these are cats. I don't know if Basil's a male, but they will, uh, you know, their friendships aren't like dogs. They're different. But I do feel like they're going to be okay together. But I am explaining to Stephen that we're not going to have any bullying of Basil. We're not going to have him hurting him. We're not going to have him being aggressive. I'm actually just asking him to ignore Basil for now. I don't feel like there's much of a happy medium for him. I'm going to ask him to turn his attention back on you and the girls and ignore Basil as much as he can. And that we'll just revisit this in a few months when Basil gets a little bit bigger. When Basil can hold his own more, they'll start having more fun. But for now, it just feels yucky. It just feels like he's being mean, and he is, because he thinks it's funny. He's having fun. So we're not going to have that. See, I think that Steven will be the one that actually kind of starts playing with Basil eventually, and they do better together. So, But for now, I'm going to just kind of putting up that wall and asking him to Ignore Basil, leave him alone, completely ignore him, and just focus on you and the girls only. And I think that that'll help us start finding some peace in the house so that poor Basil can just, you know, grow and develop and get happier. Okay. All right, Taurus says, Lucy, my aunt's dog could use some extra love today. Oh my goodness, little Yorkie. Let's just do a little healing for him. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of fear and anxiety in this dog. I am actually feeling really prompted, Tara, to put, uh, to call in an angel to stay with him. So I'm actually gonna call in Uriel and ask Archangel Uriel to just stay really close to this dog and help him to stay calm, but also to feel supported and loved I, it just feels to me like that's what needs to happen like we need a guardian so that's what i did yes okay renee says i think teddy's been tired of being stuck inside this is teddy who's who was naughty to the other kitty i'm letting him out more and he won't be bullying the other cats yeah it'll be good for him he definitely is he's he's a wild man Oh, she said he came from an outside family of cats and was full grown when I got him and I thought he was feral. Yeah, he's not quite feral, but man, there's kind of a wild cat uh, vibe around him, isn't there? All right, Sheila brings us Maya. This is her schnauzer. She's so cute. She's 16. <laughs> I adore Maya. She's taking a break from her not so busy life. She's doing good these days. She says hi. Hello to Maya. What a little doll. I love her. All right. <laughs> so Jane's kitty Maxwell puked on the carpet. She said it's the only carpet she has for her entire apartment. So of course that's where he would puke. Yep. Seems legit. <laughs> yep. 
Ali Shia says dogs also communicate. Her older dogs have taught the younger ones. Oh yeah, totally, totally. All right, Jane says, I am so interested in epigenetics in pets. Goes hand in hand with why vaccines and the crappy commercial pet foods we're feeding the past 50 years are creating such cantankerous pets, yeah. So interesting, all the toxins they've been exposed to has passed through their genes over generations. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it is. <laughs> They're so, they're so different than they, I don't know. And I, I kind of go back and forth because I think in some ways we do our animals such this disservice. Like I think about like giant dogs in little apartments and I go, and then we do all of this work to alter this dog's behavior to be able to exist in this little apartment. And I go, okay, well, he has a family who loves him. He has a good life, right? Yes, he does. But it, would this be the life he would choose for himself if he could, or would he choose somewhere where he had more room and could run outside? And it's not wrong. I'm not saying anybody's wrong. Don't get, don't, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. But I think that sometimes we forget that uh, these are animals that uh, have their own tendencies. And I, you know, I look at my piggies and I go, would these piggies be happier not sleeping on the couch in blankets? Would they be happier outside permanently? I don't know. I they, they don't know anything different and they love their life in the house. Is it the right life for them? I wonder sometimes. They're happy, they're loved, but we do as humans, we assume a lot, you know? I don't know, just something I think about. Oh. And Terry said, sadly, she has no pets at her house. Not right now. <laughs> she said, Kylie wants a black kitten and I want a gray or Siamese. Oh, well, you know, they could grow up together. It would be very sweet. <laughs> Lynn says she's been to two doctors and has to go back Friday on the spider bite. She said they're watching it. One says he'll have to clean it out and stitch the hole closed if it doesn't heal and it will take a couple of months. Lynn, I think that's where you're headed. I'm sorry. But honestly, if we could just get the pain under control, right? So that you can function on that leg without it being like that. Yep, well, stick with those doctor's appointments, okay? That's, that's gonna be key. Don't, don't just plan on doing this by yourself and you're obviously not. So I do wanna do a healing on that though. I should have done that in the first place. So I'm gonna tune in there. We're gonna cool it. So I'm going to call in the ethereal energy of sterling silver and of aqua, aquamarine. We're going to call those two in together and create a sphere. And then I'm going to just place that sphere on your leg so that it's just rotating through and cooling this, cooling the inflammation because it just feels hot to me and hard and uncomfortable. Okay, so that's what my guidance is showing me. So we'll leave that in place and let that continue to go to work for you while you go the medical aspect so that we can get this to settle down. Okay. All right, oh, I moved my Facebook, hold on. <laughs> Raven says, thanks for the story. I have some seven month old kittens that turn into monsters the minute it is feeding time. They came from feral parents, which explains their behavior. Now I understand the epigenetics. Yep. Yeah, that's where it's at. So we don't have time today, Raven, but we could definitely work on that at some point. Really quickly, though, Lynn has got uh, her dog, Archie. Archie is cooler than cool. And she says, can we tell him not to chase the cat? The cat, Kiki, has a heart murmur and doesn't need some dang dog chasing her around. Right. Okay. Let's talk to Archie. Archie just thinks he's having fun. That's the thing about Archie. He's not a jerk. <laughs> you know, he's not trying to be Henri. He's just having fun. But I'm going to show him. So here's what I'm going to show him, Lynn. I'm going to show him that when he chases Kiki, that it scares you, it hurts your heart, and it upsets you. Because that's what will get through to him. Yeah, he didn't know. He should know, he just gets lost in the moment. 
I'm going to tell him now if he gets the urge, if he feels like he wants to chase Kiki, that I want him to go to a different part of the house until he that urge stops so that he's not hurting you with that behavior. If he does it, Lynn, your job is to say, ouch, ouch, that hurts so that he knows that you're hurting him or he's hurting you. Dogs respond to pain. They don't want to hurt their owners. So you say, ouch, that hurts my heart. That makes me sad so that he remembers. He gets it. All right, guys, we've done it. We've, we've beyond done it. <laughs> so thank you for being here. I'm going to see you next Tuesday at noon right here on 1-2 Radio in my brand new time slot. I'll also see you tomorrow with the Psychic Sisters and on Monday with 1-2 News. And, of course, I'll be over at 1-2-Listen.com for the rest of the day and evening to help you out. You've been listening to the Katie Weaver Show on 1-2 Radio, where we're changing the way you listen to the world.